Hi, I'm Simon Can. Welcome to Synthesizer Bootcamp. This is the fourth video in the series and looks at low frequency oscillators, or LFOs as they're usually called. Like envelopes, which were featured in the last video, LFOs do not make any sound, but instead they change a level over time and that level change can be applied to a range of modulation destinations. However, unlike envelopes which usually begin, execute their level change and then end, LFOs are oscillators and so when they reach the end of their cycle they begin again. This gives a constantly changing level. Another significant difference is that where an envelope can generate a positive or a negative output, an LFO can generate both positive and negative levels during a single cycle. This has significant implications for how an LFO can control its modulation destination. There are three main controls that determine the effect an LFO will have on a sound. The wave shape, the depth or the amount of the modulation and the frequency or the speed of the low frequency oscillator. We'll look at wave shapes in a moment. Let's look at the other two settings first. The frequency control sets the speed of the low frequency oscillator. Unlike sound generating oscillators, the frequency is not controlled by the keyboard, but is instead set manually. Here's a low frequency oscillator set to produce a slow vibrato sound. And here's an LFO set to produce a much faster vibrato effect. You can set the frequency control anywhere between these two extremes to get the sonic result you are looking for. You can also link the frequency of the LFO to the tempo of your track in order to create rhythmic effects. We'll listen to that effect later in this video. The depth control sets the extent to which the modulation destination is affected by the LFO. With lower depth settings, the LFO can make a subtle change. While with more extreme settings, with the frequency kept at the same level but the depth increased, the effect of the LFO is much more pronounced. Different synthesizers offer different LFO waveform options. Some offer a few choices and others offer many different waves. But as a minimum, most offer a sine wave, a square wave, a triangle wave, a sawtooth wave, and a random wave. Your choice of wave will often be driven by the effect you are trying to achieve. Let's look at these waves in a bit more detail and listen to some of the effects they can create. A sine wave outputs a continuous level change. This can give very smooth changes, making it an ideal choice as the modulation source if you want to create a vibrato effect. This is achieved by modulating the pitch of the oscillator sound source. Equally, if you apply the sine wave to modulate your filter's cutoff frequency, it can give a very natural wah-wah effect especially if you select a bandpass filter's cutoff frequency as the modulation destination. You can also use a sine wave to modulate an amplifier's output level to give a retro tremolo effect. By contrast, a square wave outputs a level that is either set at the maximum positive level or the maximum negative level. This gives a sonic result that is very different from that given by a sine wave and has many more rhythmic uses. If the square wave is used as a modulation source to control an oscillator's pitch, then the result is a trill. 
In this case, the modulation depth control will set the interval between the two trilled notes. By applying a square wave to a filter, a rhythmic effect can be created. As you will hear, the rhythmic effect is created by switching between two filter cutoff settings. And by applying a square wave as the modulation source for an amplifier's output level, a more extreme rhythmic effect can be created. With higher depth settings, the volume of the sound can be cut completely, emphasising the staccato potential for this effect. We've now heard the two extremes. Sine waves make smooth changes and square waves make immediate changes and then hold the level until the next extreme change. Most of your choices simply combine those two changes. For instance, a sawtooth wave will progressively increase its level or decrease its level and will then drop. You've probably noticed that by using a square wave, a rhythmic effect can be created. This effect works equally well with other pulse-based waves or waves where there are extreme or non-smooth changes. Many synthesizers allow you to link the speed of the LFO to the tempo of the track so that each oscillator is a division of the beat. For instance, you could set the LFO speed to eighth notes. This would mean that each LFO cycle would last for an eighth note, so you would hear eight cycles during a measure. It also means that the speed of the LFO will be directly linked to the tempo of your track, and so some patches may sound better or worse at different tempos. To hear this effect in practice, listen to the following extract, where the LFO is linked to the tempo of the track. That's the end of this video. If you want to know more, then take a look at the other videos in this Synthesizer Bootcamp series. You should also check out some of my books about synthesis, which cover the issues raised in these videos in much greater detail. In particular, I suggest you look at How to Make a Noise and Becoming a Synthesizer Wizard from Presets to Power User. Both are available from all leading bookstores, including the online stores. You can find out more about Synthesizer Bootcamp and my books by visiting my website, noisesculpture.com. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon.